All right, let's now recap our top story this morning. The ruling Jubilee Party is set to launch its re-election manifesto today to outline its agenda for the next five years. President Uru Kenyatta says that rapid industrialization was at the heart of the next phase of Jubilee's agenda for Kenya's development. This will also include expanding electricity access. The opposition NASA coalition is also expected to launch its manifesto tomorrow. And in studio now to help us get insights on what to expect in the Jubilee Manifesto is a former American-based philanthropist and now parliamentary aspirant from Mwingi West on a Jubilee party ticket. Mwende Mwenzi, good morning. Thank you for good coming morning. in. Thank Must you. be an exciting day for members of the Jubilee party. It absolutely is. Um, we're gearing up because uh, we're just about to continue on what we have been doing for the past four years. Mm -hmm. So as an aspirant, as a member of Jubilee, this is, this is a good day for us. Do you think the Jubilee party has achieved all the pledges that were made, or most of the pledges that were made in 2013? It's certainly, and I don't think any party achieves everything it sets out to do, but I think it has accomplished most of what it intended to do and most of the promises that it made Kenyans. Um, more than any other government in, this, uh, in our history, it's created tons of jobs. We've had about 800,000 jobs, both directly and indirectly, created um, across the spectrum from infrastructure, which we've actually seen an infrastructural um, revolution, really, to health, to education, to women empowerment. This government has done a lot. And I, you know, I'm aspiring under Jubilee mm. because I think that it deserves another four years to, you know, five years to continue on what it has started and to uh, commence projects that it thinks will take Kenya to the next level. Mm -hmm. But even as we talk about that, let, let's just take a look at the situation Kenyans are in right mm -hmm. now. Corruption levels are high. Uh, there's high cost of living, especially on prices of uh, commodities that you cannot go without. So how are we expecting to get into this other phase and dealing with the issues that Kenyans are grappling with right now? Well, you know, everything is temporary. Um, the high cost of living is not something that's unique to Kenya, even even in this moment. Mm -hmm. In fact, I heard uh, the president of, of Tanzania, Magafuli, talking about the problems they're having with, with maize. So this isn't unique. Um, what this government has done is set the foundation for the way forward. The SGR is simply an example. There's cost savings there. All of these things cost money in the initial phases. They're capital intensive. Moving forward, though, you know, you can't blame the government, say, for lack of rain. Um, the country, ha the government has imported maize. Mm -hmm. um, the cost of living is going to lower. Uh, when we talk about things that are more accessible, generally speaking, if you even look at uh, maternal health care, mm -hmm. you know, I go to these barazas and I see young women with these beautiful babies and they didn't pay a single coin. That wasn't heard of before. Um, as, as regards corruption, mm -hmm. Corruption is something that uh, we definitely have to grapple with. I don't think that it is something that is necessarily institutionalized. I think we as Kenyans have a grain of corruption in our DNA. Mm. And until, as a society, we take stock of it, yeah. I don't think we'll be able to really... But, but as a government, uh, b b because this we talk about... We talk about the Jubilee government having done a lot of things, having uh, put up all these projects, but we've also lost billions of shillings as a country on corruption. So is it a give with another hand and take with, a, with another through corruption? I, I think that's also exaggerated um, because when you think of this government, no other government that I'm aware of, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, has ever had uh, cabinet ministers or permanent secretaries forcefully step aside so that they're investigated. But, but cases haven't gone to full trial. C cases have not gone to full trial, mm -hmm. but that is now a different arm of government. I mean, we, we cannot blame uh, the executive for uh, what's happening in the legislative, mm -hmm. but you can see some traction. Before, even if you were a known, uh, even if you were a known criminal, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. nothing would ever happen to you. It would not even be discussed even in the media. Um, it would, it would. We have come a long it, way. It, there was a lot of censorship th that, that was wrong. The media would always... Before there was a lot of censorship. Out. Yeah, but I would uh, want us to move away from that. Sure. So this next phase will concentrate on industrialization and uh, um, 
empowerment for the youth. I've, I've seen a number of those things as well as electrical connectivity. Mm -hmm. Just just let us in on, yeah, on what absolutely. Jubilee Thank will you. be concentrating on. Um, first of all, what Jubilee did was it set the foundation for infrastructure. So that is that is going on. Um, of course, there's some projects that have to be that have to be completed, but we are very proud. I'm not in government yet, mm -hmm. but I am very proud as a Kenyan of what Jubilee has been able to accomplish. Let's say on uh, the connectivity that you mentioned, over three million homes in a mere four years have been connected. Uh, what the president and his deputy have vouched to to see is that all Kenyans, not just uh, these new homes that all Kenyans, particularly in the rural areas, have electricity. Um, uh, when it comes to job creation, there are many different things that they're trying to do. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, we've got over 800,000 jobs. Uh, right now, there's even a program. It's called the Ajira program that's trying to um, help about 10,000 uh, digital uh, you know, youth. Um, they're trying to, there's this uh, mentorship program, mm -hmm. you know, that guarantees the one year of employment yeah. to basically address the unemployment uh, issues that we have in the country, understanding fully well that we need to invest in the youth. Um, beyond the infrastructure, of course, there's, there's the ed education. Mm -hmm. And education is huge. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, when I was young, we used, to, we used to pay for everything. Of course, uh, President Kibaki came in with free primary school education. When this government came in, it subsidized secondary school education. But when you can't complete it, then you're stranded. So I take this message to my people in the constituencies, and they are extremely, extremely, mm -hmm. extremely relieved that come January, mm -hmm. there will be no such thing as uh, secondary school fees. All right, I understand that is definitely a pledge that has been made by both sides, but there's a standoff currently on the printing of ballot papers. We know that uh, the opposition is in the process of uh, getting a case on uh, to stop uh, the printing of ballot papers. Yesterday, the chairman of the IEBC said they have already started the process in Dubai. Your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are actually very simple. This has nothing to do with the credibility of the IBC or the ballot papers. This is merely a tactic to stall the elections. Um, in my view and the view of many and what the numbers clearly indicate is that the opposition, uh, the opposition leader understands very well that he's losing the election. He's consistently tried... But, but how can we be sure that he's losing the be, election? Because, because the numbers... He's, he's losing leverage everywhere. Mm -hmm. Ukambani before, as an example, was an ODM stronghold. Mm -hmm. He has lost significant numbers in Ukambani. Similarly, Bungoma, similarly Taita Taveta, Kwale, Tana River, Lamu. You just, you don't even need to be a mathematician <laughs> to do the calculation. <laughs> but what, what all wow. of this hullabaloo is, is just diverting the attention from the internal But, but who wrangling. would win, technically? Who would win if Kenyans an election win. would be stalled? Oh, if, if the election yeah, is stalled, yeah. Kenyans lose. Kenyans lose, and that's why we're saying there's a constitution that protects the election date. Mm -hmm. It is set in the constitution, which the Kenyans own. Kenyans are ready to vote for, other, for reasons because, you know, they want A, to see the continuation of this government, and B, to send home the leaders that have failed them. Well, okay. I will have to end there. I would like us to continue with this conversation, but I understand we don't have too much time. Yeah. Always a pleasure to have you on here, Indeed. Mwende. And Indeed. of course, we will be seeing how the launch of that manifesto goes this it's evening. It's bound to be very colorful. All right, we will see. We'll definitely be bringing Thank it you. live to you. But let's take a look at how you polled on our Twitter poll question. We asked, has the Jubilee government lived up to its 2013 pre-election pledges? 74% of you said no. And 26% of you said yes. Let's take a look at a number of your views. Agufana says, we thought Uhuruto would steer Kenya to prosperity. Boy, we were wrong. This, this, their greatest achievement is corruption. Uh, we also have Samuel Oruta who says they have not accomplished any of the 2013 pledges. What they are launching and promising is what they were to do in 2013 and they have not done it. Uh, Sam says, my son has a laptop. The road outside my house is well built. There are more police cars in my area. What more could I ask for? Huru Tano Tena definitely in support. Bonfeston Bax says, Jubilee should be giving Kenyans a scorecard on what they promised last election, not launching a new manifesto. I give them three out of ten.
And finally, Little Angel or Tony Nyongese says they have tried anyway. They deserve a second term. Thank you very much for engaging with us here on our tutorial question on Worldview. Up next, Betty Kalo uh, brings you News Center. So do stay tuned for that. My name is Akisa Wandera. I'll see you at 1 p.m. for News Desk. Good morning.